So now that we know the definition of the sum of an infinite series, we're going to try to use it to calculate uh, to calculate the sum of a particular series. So the example we'll do is determine the sum of the series 1 over n, n plus 1. So uh, first of all, just to, to map this onto what we know, a n is equal to 1 over n, n plus 1. This is the general term of the series. It's also the general term of, the underly of an underlying sequence, but what we're interested in is uh, finding the sum of this series. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out the sequence of partial sums and see if we can calculate the limit of that sequence of partial sums. Recall that the basic principle here is that the sum of the series, if it exists, is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence of partial sums. So we need to actually write out the sequence of partial sums to see if we can calculate that limit. So let's write out, uh, first of all, let's um, put this series in a little bit of a more convenient form because I think it's, it's going to make it easier to, to see what the sequence of partial sums is. So first of all, uh, note that, that this is this expression 1 over n, n plus 1. If I had given this to you with x's, it should call to mind partial fractions. I'm not going to perform the partial fraction decomposition. Go back and see our, our lecture on section 8.6 if you want to see how that works. I'm simply going to give you the partial fraction decomposition. Oops, there we go. And write that that is 1 over n, n plus 1 is equal to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. If you, if you actually do the partial fraction decomposition the way that we did in section 8.6, you, you will in fact get that as, as, as the decomposition. So what that means is that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, n plus 1 is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And you're going to see that this is a little bit easier to work with for the purpose of, of dealing with partial sums. So Let's write out some partial sums. Let's write out S1. It's just going to be the first term in, is, is going to be uh, the sum of the first one term, in other words, the first term. So since we're using this expression for the general term of the, the, of this, of the series, because uh, we determined it was equivalent to this general term, that's S1 is just going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 2. Let's write the second term. That's going to be so, sorry, the second partial sum. So that's going to be the sum of the first two terms. So that's going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. That was the first term. Plus, now we're at 2. So that's 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3. So just to be clear on what I'm doing here, what I have is n equals 1. Here I have n equals 1 and n equals 2. Let's write it out for... Uh, for the third term, sorry, the third partial sum is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. And again, just to be clear, what I've written here is n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. And I'm just adding those up. Let's write out one more, because I think it'll become a little bit more apparent if I do this. So this is going to be S4. The fourth partial sum is 1 over 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth minus 1 fifth. Now look what we have here. What happens when you, when you write out the terms this way is you see that here, if you look at S2, I have negative one-half and positive one-half that cancel each other out. So this entire expression just comes out to 1 over 1, which is 1 minus 1 third. For S3, I have negative one-half and positive one-half, and also negative one third and positive one third. So what I'm left with is 1 minus 1 fourth. And for S4, you can see the same thing. I cancel the positive and negative one-half, positive and negative one third positive and negative one-fourth, and what I'm left with is one minus one-fifth. So if S3 is equal, so if S2 is equal to one minus one-third, and S3 is equal to one minus one-fourth, and S4 is equal to one minus one-fifth, hopefully you can see that for any Sn, because of all these cancellations that I get in the middle, Sn is going to equal one minus one over 
n plus 1. So I now have an expression that gives me the nth term in the sequence of partial sums. Recall that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of s n. So that's uh, so. What I have now is I have an expression for s n. Let's see if we can calculate that limit. That's just going to be limit as n approaches infinity. That's capital n, one minus one over n plus one. It should be fairly easy to see that this is just going to equal one minus one over infinity, which is one minus zero, or one. So there we go. We've now used the definition of we've, we've used the definition of the sum of an infinite series using its, its definition as the limit of sequence of partial sums uh, to calculate the sum of this series. And it turns out that if you add up all of these terms in this series, which we showed was through, well we didn't show but I told you through partial fractions is equivalent to this series. It, it's just algebraically equivalent. If we add up all the terms in this series, we just get one. Uh, so this is an ex our first example where we're adding up an infinite number of terms of a, uh, we're adding up an infinite number of terms in a sequence. When we add them up, we call it a series, and we and even though there are an infinite number of them, we get a finite number, which in this case is one. The series whose sum we found in this problem is actually actually has a name. It's called a telescoping series. It's actually a fairly important series when you go on to, uh, to higher level math such as analysis uh, because this is uh, instrumental in, for example, the proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. I don't want to go into the details of that right now, but uh, the reason it's called a telescoping series I think is because of the degree of overlap that you see. I think this is supposed to call to mind like one of those folding telescopes where the, uh, the pieces sort of nest within each other, where they, they, they you know, they collapse into each other. I think that's what it's supposed to call to mind. I don't know if I'm drawing that type of telescope correctly, but that's what telescoping refers to. Anyway,